everybody it is Jenny of Jenny Stitches and welcome back to my channel I hope you are all well <laughs> so it's taken me a little while to get this video together for you and that's mostly because I needed to do some ironing <laughs> and I've been a little bit lazy about my ironing since we came back from holidays and most of my holiday makes have been chucked in the ironing basket so <laughs> I have finally got them out I found the time to film a video and have a quick chat to you about what I made and yeah I hope you're good. <laughs> so we had a lovely holiday. We went to Ibiza. Um, we haven't really been properly abroad since before the kids were born. Definitely not for a sort of pool type holiday. Um, and it was the first time the kids had been on a plane. So it was just wonderful. I'm so glad we left it until they are the age that they are now because they really, really enjoyed it. They got a lot out of it. Um, seeing seeing the faces when the plane took off was just priceless so um i'm hoping that the angle's okay on this video i'm kind of looking at it and wondering if i'm going downhill a bit but bear with me <laughs> i'm still not quite fully up to date on filming locations for the new shop in terms of where the lighting is best and camera angles that kind of thing so I'm working on it but I have my coffee um it's Friday evening I've just been doing a Friday live video I'm sure you'll have seen those going up um everybody seems to be really enjoying those um so I'm a little bit talked out but we'll keep going <laughs> right so way back before I actually moved shops and I did book my holiday um, I put together a bit of a makes plans video and I was really excited to be going away um, and at that point the shop move was not finalised or officially happening so um, yeah I kind of had higher expectations and was maybe realistic which is often the case with you know when you're making sewing plans but um, I think although I didn't make as much as I wanted to compared to what I was talking about then um, I'm still really pleased that I managed to make some <laughs> garments to go away with because my summer in, in particular June was absolutely crazy um, every waking minute of the day week was spent in here flooring painting moving getting ready getting set up wow that sun where is that okay so we're bit of a different angle here but I'm kind of hoping that I've got that sun behind me now and you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly so um yes so um I think before I went away the I had been working on my Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress which I had on the mannequin at the time of filming I think it was nearly finished um and I did finish that before the shop move and um yeah I was really really pleased with it and it lived on the mannequin for quite some time it went straight into the shop window when we moved across um obviously being very summery that was a a key sort of display piece so I didn't actually get a chance to wear it until we went away um this is the pattern if if you haven't heard of it it's the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress it was one of her new pattern releases this year um, I really enjoyed making this I had a bit of trouble getting the sharing going <laughs> um, it was the first time that I've tried sharing so this was a really nice place to start um, the bodice is shared around the waistline and around the sleeves I went for the short sleeve option um, I really enjoyed making it as I say and then because it's all elasticated fitting was just really simple so very very pleased with that um, I will show you just on the hanger here um, it doesn't really look anything flat <laughs> um, this is a viscose it's a viscose poplin um, and it was called sunset I think I sold two full rolls of this <laughs> um, and unfortunately it's not in stock now but it's very very pretty but any viscose would have the same effect um, I would quite like to make a longer sleeve version for autumn winter it would also be nice in a more in like a heavier cotton possibly in a lawn or a gingham would be nice um, but yeah I enjoyed making it it's a nice pattern and I'd really like to revisit sharing and have another go at it um, I'm gonna insert a couple of pictures of me wearing it whilst we were away um, 
it was just perfect for where we were. It was a nice weight because it was very, very warm. Um, it wasn't too thick and heavy, so it was just lovely and breathable. I wore it out when we went for a meal out um, and when we went for drinks and cocktails one evening, I wore it then as well. So I felt it was a little bit, for me, it was a little bit too dressy for just day to day by the pool simply because it was a dress that I had made and put a lot of effort into <laughs> so it, I didn't feel like it was a throw-on kind of dress um, but if you wanted it to be a throw-on kind of dress it absolutely could be excuse the coffee machine making noises there. okay so moving on from the Mabel also before we moved I um, made a beach bag and this was in part of my original plans um, and if it does show up on this video I am sorry for the state of this beach bag it is quite grubby <laughs> <laughs> but that is testament to the fact that I used it loads whilst we were away. So I didn't use a pattern to make this bag. I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. Um, I basically just drafted it from my head in terms of it's a very simple rectangle with a box bottom. Um, if you've ever done a box bottom bag you know that they're quite good fun. Um, and somebody did ask over on Instagram if I would make a kind of sew along tutorial for doing this. The answer is yes, I would like to at some point, but I don't have time at the moment, but I do intend on showing you how I went about this. Um, on the outside, I've used my Doodle Waves cotton canvas. Again, very grubby, I do apologise. And <laughs> on the inside, I've used um, a remnant of lightweight dark denim. So the two of which go together really, really well. Um, and I used a Kylie and the Machine label from last year's advent calendar, I think it was, that says Sewn Like a Boss, just to finish it off. Um, and I did also put in a little zipped pocket, like a secret kind of welt zipper pocket inside. I'll show you that there. It's um, big enough to put my phone in. And that was really handy whilst we were out and about. I just felt like my phone was secure because it was right in the back pocket and not too obvious. Um, originally, I think I said um, previously, I don't know if it was on my last video, that um, I wasn't going to put a tough bottom in this because I wanted it to sort of just fold up soft and throw it in my case. I actually ended up using this as hand luggage because I didn't see the point in taking another bag and I took this everywhere with me on holiday. It was down at the pool, it went to the beach, I had it on the plane, it was just fabulous. So really, really pleased with it. Um, the handles are 12 millimeter cotton rope cord, um, which you see a lot on beach bags. <laughs> and I put in some 14 millimeter prim eyelets, which was good fun. Um, and I tied my knots on the outside of the bag. Now, <laughs> I've been in quite a lot of shops recently where I've seen beach bags that you can buy and they've got these rope handles and then the knots seem to be on the inside. So I don't know if I've done it wrong, but I kind of like, I like the fluffed up knot on the end. So that'll do for me. But yes, that was my bag. I was insanely proud of this. It was very neat. Very neat sewing, I was very pleased with it. Um, I've got a real sort of hankering to make more bags at the moment, so prepare to see more bag related content. But yes, that was a definite success. 10 out of 10, would I make again? <laughs> okay, next item. So, back when I made the plans video, I mentioned that I wanted to make a oversized shirt using the Riviera cotton linen blend. Um, and I'm pleased to say that I did. <laughs> um, the jury was out at the time of filming, I think, as to which pattern I was going to use. I know I was looking at the Closet Car Cali shirt, but I decided against that because I think from memory, the button placket doesn't go all the way down. It just didn't quite have all the elements that I was looking for. I had seen um, an inspiration picture on Pinterest, which I will pop up here of an oversized shirt and shorts kind of look and I was like well I like that look um so I was very much basing my shirt idea off that I did want it to have proper um like a proper placket and cuff so I had the option of a long sleeve or just rolling that up to make it more casual um I very nearly went with a style arc pattern it was nearly the style arc Lauren I think it's Lauren boyfriend shirt um, but again, that just wasn't quite what I was looking for. And then I stumbled across the Pattern Emporium Ocean Days very oversized shirt. 
that is a mouthful. Um, I have not used a Pattern Emporium pattern before, but I know a lot of you have recommended them. I know at the start of the year when I was saying that I wanted to try different indie designers, Pattern Emporium was definitely recommended. Um, so I figured why not give it a go now? And I have to say, I thought it was fantastic. I, I get the hype with those patterns. The instruction book was phenomenal. I didn't print it all off because quite often I do print the instructions so I can just tick things off because it was huge. The PDF was massive. So many colour pictures of people's makes, loads of different variations and tips and techniques. So very, very detailed instructions. If you are a beginner sewist, I would very much recommend looking at their patterns because the way that things are described is very clear and the level of detail um, I thought was brill. Um, I have made quite a few shirts before. I really enjoy shirt making, but using that pattern really broke down some of the steps and some of the tips I found really, really useful. Um, for example, she recommends in there using a blind hem foot to do all of the top stitching around your button plackets and the collar to keep everything super even. And that worked so, so well for me. Um, I'd say it's one of the nicest top stitched <laughs> shirts I've ever managed. So that's a technique that I'll be carrying forwards. Um, but here it is. It is very oversized as, <laughs> as the description would suggest. And that's exactly what I wanted. Um, I opted not to do the collar stand. The pattern had the option for a, a collar stand or just a plain collar. I just went with the plain collar. Um, I did put the patch pocket on and I decided to cut it in the opposite direction just for a little bit of interest. Um, and I did quite a nice job. I was quite pleased of the pattern matching on the yoke and the collar at the back. So I just made sure when I was cutting out that I had the centre fold of all those pieces exactly where I needed them to be. And yeah, in terms of quality of sewing, I was so pleased with this. I felt like I did a really nice job of it, um, unlike some of the other things, which I will come on to. Um, I popped on these Italian buttons at the end. I will tag them up. I hope that's going to kind of show up. Um, but yeah, absolutely fit the bill. The only thing that I did do wrong because we always have to point out our mistakes, was on one of the cuffs, I um, put the button and the buttonhole on the wrong side, so it twisted around. And at the time I was like, oh, I've ruined all my really nice hard work. I'd actually forgotten about it until I sat down now to think about the sewing process, so it didn't affect it in use at all. Um, I will put it in a picture of it on me on holiday, but yes, absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's got this lovely curved hem at the bottom um, and again the instructions for how to hem it neatly were really really good if I can show you my hem there that's one of the nicest narrow hems I've ever done um, and again you were using that blind hem foot so again 10 out of 10 would recommend okay. item number four this was not on my original plans list was it? I'm gonna actually, I have the list that I made from the video and this was not on it. <laughs> um, I did want to make, back then, I wanted to make the True Bias Danny shorts in some linen, um, but I had a bit of a brainwave and it came from a one meter remnant of den denim fabric, which I happened to have in the shop. And it was the nice, uh, nine and a half ounce denim that I've got or 9.75 in a lovely sort of pale blue and some time ago much earlier this year in the spring I was talking about how this year I wanted to have a go at making jeans um, and a few times I've covered off the fact that I'd cut out a toile for the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans which I'll show you here I will pop in a picture as well so you can see those clearly these are the style of jeans that I want, nice high waist, rigid, but I'll be honest, I've been scared of doing it. <laughs> um, like most people on this planet, shopping for jeans is a bit of a nightmare. Um, I have quite a big hip to waist ratio, so my, I am very hip dominant, if you will, very pear shaped. So I'm all hips and tummy with a small waist. So. 
fitting wise buying ready to wear I find quite difficult so the idea of sewing going to all the effort of sewing jeans and then for them not to fit was enough fear of failure for me not to start um, so I have put off and put off making that while and then I saw this one meter remnant of denim and I thought hang on what if I just make the short I'm not wasting loads of fabric I get a full run through of the pattern process and yeah I decided to go for it and what was nice about the dawns is that my waist usually measures around a 32 and my hip around 41 42 ish give or take a bit depending <laughs> depending on how well I've been eating um so the dawns actually size 14 and the dawns did fit those measurements perfectly so I went ahead and cut straight size 14 and here is <laughs> the finished result um this fabric was a joy to sew and I have this in a lightweight colour sorry in a light wash colour and a indigo like a dark kind of classic indigo I've got it back in stock now um, I used the Gutterman denim top stitch thread I'm hoping that might show up nicely on there um, and yeah I'm so pleased with how they turned out there's the pockets at the back um, imagine my surprise when I pulled them on and they fit <laughs> I was blown away <laughs> so so they were a success um, in terms of going forward to use them to make jeans um, I think I do have a fitting issue that I would like to iron out and that is that they are just a little bit hungry in the crotch um, so whether that is a crotch depth issue or something else I need to do a little bit of reading up but they do fit, they are wearable, but they're not perfect yet. So very much wearable twirl, very pleased with that. I put the coin pocket on the wrong side, but who cares? <laughs> but yes, very, very pleased with them. And yeah, I was quite proud of them actually. So I give that maybe an eight out of 10. <laughs> um, definitely recommend the pattern though. And I know that uh, they do a curve version PDF only as well, which is handy okay i'm hoping that my battery holds out um because i have been filming friday live it's looking a little bit low so let's move on to item number five now then this one is a bit of a curveball um i didn't put this in my sewing plans and i'll be honest with you i didn't intend to make it up until about a week before we left to go um <laughs> and it is the tilly and the buttons coralie swimsuit um the mere thought of sewing swimwear terrified me um, but after watching the sewing bee and seeing them do it on there I became more and more curious and after shopping for swimwear this summer I thought surely, surely I can do this. <laughs> so um, this is the pattern, it's the Coralie. Here we are back again, my battery indeed did run out so the uh, video quality might not be quite as good on here but <laughs> you get the idea we can finish the video off so yes this is the Coralie by Tilly and the Buttons and I opted to make um the swimsuit with the low back and the ruffle now then this is where I went wrong I don't know what possessed me to do the low back <laughs> version except that I'd seen it on the pictures and I liked it but if I had fought this through, I am quite busty. I'm probably a size, a UK 12 on the top and a 14 on the bottom. I'm curvy and pear-shaped and I have, although I have a small rib cage, I have quite a full bust. And so a low back swimsuit is never, was just never gonna work for me. And that was kind of where I went wrong. <laughs> so fit wise, it was not ideal, however, thank goodness for Tilly she had um a tutorial on the website of how to add um a tie to the back which I did and that did rectify it and made it wearable um I am gonna just be honest and say this is not my best work <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination looking up close at it some of the stitching is pretty bad not that it's gonna fall apart but it's a bit scruffy in places but it's a first attempt at swimwear and I did complete it. 
<laughs> it was questionable at one point. I finished it, I wore it, I swam in it, it passed the test. Um, so yeah, I really, really want to go back and master making swimwear. Um, by the time I'd finished with it, I was like, oh, I've got to be in my bonnet now. I really need to, <laughs> really need to get this mastered. But um, technically not amazing sewing, but so happy with how it actually turned out. I was, I made a swimming costume. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I think that's something to be proud of. Um, yeah, so there you go. So I'm going to be brave and insert a picture of me wearing it. <laughs> Nobody needs that. <laughs> <laughs> um swimwear on the internet but yeah lots and lots of lessons learned from this i did set out using the gutterman mariflex um i kind of wish i hadn't bothered i think it just once i got the zigzag stitch going with it there were just a few places where the thread was really not happy um and i was up against it time wise and i'd taken it home to work on um, and I didn't have a spare spool of thread with me and I couldn't get back to the shop to get one. So I ended up using um, just just the quartz moon off my overlocker, which doesn't actually match the fabric very well. It was just some quartz moon that I had, um, but that actually did a much better job than the Mariflex in this instance. So I don't really know what the lesson learned is there, but I don't think the Mariflex liked going through. It was fine on the fabric, but it didn't like going through the swimwear elastic so i think next time i would just go with a zigzag stitch and a regular polyester thread um so you know you kind of learn as you go <laughs> um i put the shelf bra on the inside as well just for a bit more support um and uh, before i forget to mention this fabric is um just my regular plain lycra I'm on the lookout for more swimwear fabrics that have got more interesting prints for next year. So that's definitely going to be something that I look into. But yeah, I made a swimming costume. I'm still proud of that. Pattern number six is a pair of shorts um, using a little remnant piece of this viscose chalet. This is the hibiscus viscose chalet, um, which is now all sold out, I am afraid. Um, but yes, just a simple pair of elasticated kind of boxery short type things. Um, I used Simplicity 8558. What a lovely little pattern this is. I really like the blazer and I also like the crop top. Um, I did cut out the crop top in a remnant of white cotton jersey that I have, but I didn't get time to sew it up. So I might look at doing that separately because I think that might have use as kind of an undergarment. Um, these were the last thing that I made, and I am not kidding you, I was hemming them the day that we set off. <laughs> and they ended up going in my hand luggage because I couldn't even get them in the case because we'd already put the cases in the car. <laughs> um, I wore them a few times, but I wasn't wild on the fit and I, I can't really nail down why. Um, but with both the... <laughs> both these and my dawn jeans dawn jean shorts the problem that i had was that on day one everything fit by day seven they did not and that my friends is the all-inclusive buffet <laughs> so um probably worth noting with the dawn jean shorts that i'm going to give it some time and then try them again and just let things settle down but yeah um so yeah nice little pair of elasticated waist shorts Again, because I was in such a rush, I don't feel like this is my best sewing. In fact, I was threading the um, drawstring through the casing in the car on the way to the airport. <laughs> um, I, I did end up rushing a bit at the end of these, so I'm not sure it's always worth pushing through to get things finished um, because, yeah, I look at these and I'm like, it's not my best work. They're wearable, but, you know. I prefer to take my time and do a nice job. Um, so yeah, that's Simplicity 8558. Would sew again. I think I'm going to give them about a 6 out of 10. I don't know why I've started rating these things. Okay, and the final item I am wearing now. This was in my plans video and I think I had started it when I made that first video because I remember I was sewing this in the old shop. 
and I had such a nightmare with pattern matching. <laughs> it is untrue. Um, this is a Simplicity jumpsuit pattern and I've just realised I didn't pull it out. It is Simplicity 9544. I will pop a picture of the pattern cover in here. It's a dress shown on the pattern cover, but I went for the wide leg jumpsuit option. Um, I'm going to try and stand up and show you it on. <laughs> Obviously, you can't get full length, but there you go. You can see there it's got an elasticated waist and a drawstring. And we've got these patch pockets as well. Um, so very much an explorer kind of look. <laughs> My son, um, I had another, this is like a side note, my friend bought me a little play suit, like a, a creamy coloured one, and I put it on and my son was like, are you wearing that? He's 11, he says, looks like something Bear Grylls would wear. <laughs> so, thanks Jack. Um, so, so yes, very adventurous. Um, I didn't, I took this and I didn't wear it, I will be honest, because it was just too hot and anything with sleeves and full length trousers a part of me had thought oh maybe i'll wear it in the evening when we go out to dinner it was just too warm far too warm to contemplate putting this on um so i have worn it now we've come back a few times absolutely love it it's so comfortable it's kind of soft and floppy but also feels put together and stylish and i actually got out of the car this morning and thought this just feels almost too nice for work. <laughs> Obviously, it's my job to dress nicely for work and things that I've made, but I thought if I put on some glam heels, I would wear this for a night out. It's um, it's quite extra for me. I'm usually fairly conservative, but yeah, really love it. Um, and I would definitely wear this on a night out with the girls for a meal or a date night with my husband. Yeah, really like it. Um, but as I said, I did have a bit of a time with the pattern matching on the bodice. Um, I drove myself a little bit round the bend. Um, to get pattern matching right, the magic is all in the cutting out. So I was looking at my centre front line on my pattern pieces and I was like, yep, I've got this. I'm lining it up down. This is zebra. <laughs> so I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I cut it all out. I made both front pieces and then when I put them together, I was like, hang on this is not right. So I ended up having to completely recut another front piece, which if you can imagine, I'd also pattern matched the top of the pockets and oh, it was just, it was messing with my head by the time I'd done with it. So, <laughs> But I wasn't going to give in and we did do it. I did have to take a little bit more fabric off the bolt, but I think it was worth it um, because I am very proud of that pattern matching. Um, I would make this again, definitely. I would make it in the play suit version, I think, next time, and then it would probably get worn. Um, but yeah, would would recommend that one. Nice and oversized, very, very comfortable, but still feeling put together. Um, I'm going to pop in a picture, a full length picture of me wearing this today. Um, so then you can get an idea of it on. I hemmed it for wearing with heels because at first, when I first started making it, I thought it would be nice just with pumps or trainers but actually I think it needs a heel just to just to lift it a little bit and yeah so I'm wearing it with wedges today um so when I go back to my original list of things that I wanted to make there were some things that didn't get made um one of which was I wanted to make a dress out of the fabric godmother I can never say this fabric godmother cheetah lily viscose and I had the last few meters off the bolt of that fabric. Um, and I have cut out the Sew Over It Sophia dress. I will pop a picture in of that pattern cover. It's one of their new releases. I'd hoped to make this before we went, but I figured it was gonna end up a bit like the shorts and the swimming costume. I would rush it and make a mess of it. So I decided to leave it. Um, it sat on my sewing table at the back of the shop and I'm hoping to sew it up in the next couple of weeks because I've got a couple of events to go to at the very start of September and I think it would be nice to wear for those. So that's still going to get made but didn't get made in time for holidays. As I've mentioned I didn't make the Danny shorts and I'd still very much like to make those out of linen um, and they play into that Pinterest inspiration picture that I had. So 
um, I'll be coming back around to those next year, I'm sure. Um, and the other item that I didn't make was the new look wide leg trousers. And I'm, it must be about three or four years on the bounce I've been saying I'm going to make wide leg trousers for summer and I still haven't done it. Um, but I was going to make them from the Saffron Splash Viscose jersey and it all sold out before I got my hands on any. So I can't really complain about that. <laughs> um, but I am still pleased with what I managed to achieve given um, everything that's gone on. <laughs> um, and I, can't, I just can't believe that summer has just flown to a close so quickly. So I will have to come back soon with an autumn makes plan. Um, I've got a bit of a plan for what I'm going to sew for the shop window display for autumn. So I think I'll show you that and I'll show you what I want to sew for myself in the next few months in an upcoming video. But I hope you enjoyed that. I am sorry that it was a little bit chaotic with the camera angles and the batteries there, but you get the idea. Um, if you've got any questions, any comments, let me know what you like about those. Um, put them in the comments below and... I will see you soon. Take care. Happy sewing. If you did enjoy this rather chaotic video, please do like and subscribe. It's really, really helpful. Um, and let me know if there's anything that you want to see going forwards and I will try and get some more videos filmed for you. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye.